And we are live. Welcome to tournament number 10. This is what, the third day? Yeah, the third day of matches we've got coming up. Uh, the first match we're going to be having is going to be uh, Aftershock versus Carrot Brotherhood. Then we have Rainbow Bunchies versus Bed Vaff and Beyond. Uh, no, that's a lie. Then we have Carrot Brotherhood versus Rainbow Bunchies. Then we have Leftover Pizza versus Aftershock. So, in fact, Bed Vaff and Beyond is not playing today. Uh, tomorrow we have another bunch of matches, which will be very exciting. But for now, we're going to focus on Aftershock and Carrot Brotherhood. Looks like we've got Castle Wars coming up. So with me is Buffer Watts. I'm Zorgon. It's going to be great. We have loads of fun. Just going to be setting the teams and then we should be getting close to playing. So we're just getting all the teams set up. Uh, red is going to be Aftershock. Carrot Brotherhood will be blue. Not sure why they want to be specifically red. They... Um, I've not heard of any particular uh, requirements before of people wanting to be one side or the other on um, Castle Walls. It is a symmetrical map. So looking at this, we're going to have a look at the brackets while we get this all set up so at the moment in the lead we have bed vaf and beyond with two wins carrot brotherhood with one win aftershock with a win and a loss rainbow bunchies with just a loss and leftover pizza with two losses so the match we have coming up just now is going to be carrot brotherhood versus aftershock so that's carrot brotherhood with one win Aftershock with one win, one loss. If Carrot Brotherhood, or whoever wins this, is basically guaranteed to get through um, to the next stage, there is a small chance, I believe, that if they then lose the next match, that they go into tiebreakers if other teams do really well, but it puts them in a really good position. So it looks like we are ready to go. Just setting the map. Uh, 
So, we are going to be getting into the game momentarily. This is Carrot Brothers versus Aftershock. Here we go. So we are live in game. Carrot Brotherhood is on the blue side, Aftershock on the red side. Already we see uh, Aftershock pushing, sorry, Carrot Brotherhood pushing up quite strongly. Although they have now been wiped almost across the board. Both of these teams previously have been showing their tactical prowess. Usually, kind of any of our three top teams at the moment have been going for kind of single man defense, four man pushing, getting control of that middle area as per usual. Seems to be the favored strategy for most of the teams. It does provide some good security with the defender while also giving some good power for getting through to the flag. What we don't see a lot of from these teams is just kind of rushing in, trying to get the flag. Which sometimes can work if you catch the enemy team by surprise. And I mean, so far they seem pretty evenly matched. And I press the wrong string. Now the stream can see as well. We see. Pretty much even fights in middle, but now Carrot Brotherhood getting the advantage, getting into the base, but immediately getting shut down. Now one thing that we've had some uh, discussion with the community about is this spawn system. So previously players would just spawn 50 or 10 seconds after they died. With this spawn system, if there are three or more players dead, they will spawn a lot faster. Uh, if they all die in a uh, quick uh, time between each other, so 10 second range uh, when they die. So if they do die very quickly altogether, they'll respawn quite quickly. So teams have to be careful. They have to be knowing where the spawns are. And <clears throat> excuse me. Where they can hide to try and take advantage of uh, when the players will spawn. Again, we see this mid control being in Carrot Brotherhood's favor. But every time they push in, they die, so they've got to try and get around that problem. Now, Aftershock all respawning, defending their base. Looks like the Carrot Brotherhood did try to retreat a little bit, but have been slaughtered as they ran away. One defender falling back to make sure the Aftershock team doesn't get into the blue base. Yeah, I think this is the first time that Aftershock have gotten beyond the halfway point with some serious number of players, but they're all taken down again by Carrot Brotherhood. One in the base. <laughs> they do know he's here. They are chasing him down. Is he going to get the kill? No. The skillful ninja by Rafik Xander. Closed in by uh, Snapman. Looks like even, even when he's doing well, 1v3 is never going to work. We see Ninja being a fairly favoured kit across a lot of players at the moment. It gives that versatility in teamfights and moving around. In fact, that is now two Flash players, two Ninja players on Red Team that we've seen so far. Again, Ninja and Flash also on uh, Carrot Brotherhood, the blue team. Looks like a bit of F5 and coming in from Anoxity. He takes down Mining Shark. Now trying to take some cover to reload or just to get some control of that area. Aftershock pushing back out. Taking down. Dar takes down Rafik Xander. He is trying to go ham on this team. He takes down a second one with Snapman. Now hiding. Probably going to Ninja to the top. Both Ninja to the top. We are now fighting on top. And Denny gets the advantage there. Ninja's around the corner. Takes down Mining Shark. He's going for gold, and he dies. Very back and forth. Players getting two kills, but not managing to close out with that third kill and get further in. 
Now Carrot Brotherhood with the advantage, pushing right up to the walls. There's one red team member outside the base, but that's only two now remaining inside red base. One is stuck outside. That's going to be the slow respawns from the remaining players on Aftershock. Ooh, but Mr. Koo takes down Rafixander. That was the last blue in the base. Blue, once again, seems to have the advantage over mid most of the time. And Inuxity on the blue team. Leading with the kills by a margin of three. Three more kills than anyone else with 12 total. And at the moment, it looks just like Aftershock are not quite putting up the same numbers as Carrot Brotherhood, and that's why Carrot Brotherhood is succeeding here. Inuxity breaking into the base, takes down three on the way in. They're going to respawn soon. He is trying to ninja out. The respawns come in, and they take him down trying to get out. That was way closer than it probably should have been with the uh, number of players that were available there. He took down, I think, three on the way in there. And now we see Aftershock kind of rallying again, but once again, they push out and get almost all taken down. Mining Shark does manage to get a couple kills there and clear out most of the mid area, but now it's a duel. 2v1 in mid. Aftershock pushing out with more players, spamming from that defensive position. That is the benefit of always being on the back foot. You do benefit from having more players available in your base, using the defender to just randomly spam, get some extra kills. And now Aftershock, pushing into the blue half of the map. Two players trying to ninja over the wall. He's on top of the blue base. Mr. Koo, is he going to try and get the flag immediately, or is he going to try and wait for the spawns? The spawns have been fairly favorable to him right now. It looks like he should be able to get the flag and maybe get an exit. No. He tries to just run. Player behind him takes him down. Yeah, Aftershock trying to play some defensive positions in mid, but getting picked off one by one. Both teams, again, trying to get the mid control, trying to push in all together. Now, usually I'd be saying this is a great strat, but when both teams are playing this strat, it becomes very difficult to do anything kind of coherent. You see both teams, they try and get mid-control, they try and push in with maybe one or two players, those players get taken down, back and forth, back and forth. What I think we maybe need to see is more teams just trying different strategies. This is a solid strategy if you're just trying to kind of maintain map control, and it's a good stable way to keep the match going, but... It's not been successful so far in this match. I think they maybe need to formulate some way to punch through the enemy lines a bit more uh, forcefully. Yeah, maybe seeing some more of that demo that we saw last week. Saw teams blowing holes in the base. That was a really good way to try it. Now we see Aftershock again knocking on the door of Carrot Brotherhood, but getting picked off. 2v1 fight. He's trying to get inside, but again, he gets picked off just before he can do anything useful. Now neither team have gotten, I think, even out of the room. Okay, one team got up to the top tower, but they've not crossed these walls, not even gotten to mid with the flags. And now only a third of the game remaining. What even happens with a draw? I guess we'll find out if this keeps going like this. Usually in the last third, teams do get a bit more desperate and try and do some more crazy things, which I think... Seeing the way these teams are playing, it would work. So I'm kind of hoping that both teams just go for it. I just realized I think most of the sounds have been muted in-game. 
So that's sad. I think in the case of a tie, we just continue to play the other two games and then see if there's a draw after that, then, then the, it just ends in a draw. Yeah, I guess we'll see. I guess with the group format, it is possible to have Correct. a draw in total, isn't it? So it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. See, once again, Aftershock struggling to maintain control. Everyone getting the kills, but nobody really doing anything with them. Right, right. Both teams now fairly even with the kills. Inoxy and Mining Shark leading their respective teams. Snapman not really putting up the numbers. I'm not sure if that's just because he's been defending or what. I think it's because he's been defending. He's been staying inside the base. Yeah, and with this, the kind of mid control that Carrot Brotherhood have had, staying in the base doesn't really benefit them much. Now, Carrot Brotherhood once again with the mid control, but will they be able to get in and do something? Looks like the red team do know the player is in the base, and they take him down. Flag taken. Carrier kill. The flag is picked up, but immediately dropped again. Team's just not able to maintain the control in the base. Now, only three minutes remaining. Blue team, almost getting control of the red base. Looks like a Nux T, yeah. Once again, getting the kills. Will he be able to clear out this base, though? It's 2v1, and he gets taken down by Mr. Koo. Very skillful ninja jump by the by Mr. Koo there. Getting over the top of that tower to surprise him. And now blue cleared from the red base. Red, breaking into the blue base. Do they know he's there? Mining Shark, trying to get in. He's inside the tower, but they definitely know he's there. Takes one down. 1v1. Respawn's coming in taken down trying to cross that window. Those windows very dangerous because if you run past them without checking, you will get shot. Looks like that was Aftershock's biggest push into the base so far. And once again, thwarted by the Carrot Brotherhood defense. And now we see Carrot Brotherhood trying to get a bit more desperate there. One player just diving over the wall with Ninja. Doesn't manage to kill any of the defenders. And once again, Aftershock trying to push out. You can sort of see teams have become less worried about the mid control because they've split the map in half. Both teams push down the right side, trying to take advantage of the other team's push. Relying on their defense. Both teams got one player in. Once again, Mr. Koo jumping on that tower, but not quite able to get the kills that he needed to stay there. It's like a 3v1 against Oscars here. Maybe even four. Trying to ninja. Distracting most of the team, though. He gets one. Will he get any more? If he gets more here, this could be a good sign. His team running up to join him in mid. But taken down. Carol Brotherhood again. Rallying forward. Getting the mid control. This is very back and forth. And I think this is what we expect from these two teams. Yep, yep, yep. They're both very organized. And this is where I think we need to see some different strategies coming out. There's organized, and that works well for most people. But when both teams are organized, you need something a little bit more than that. I mean, ultimately it comes down to the kills. But both teams killing fairly evenly and... Not being able to go on those massive killing sprees that sometimes get the flag. flag taken. Milky Killer inside kill. the base, but taken down. Both teams, their defenders have very few, few kills. So you can see that the, by the time the, the attackers get to the flag, it's just very few times. This could be the last hope. They don't really have time to get back. 
Only 10 seconds of the match remaining. I think this could be it. And it will be. That is a draw. <coughs> Very exciting draw, but a draw nonetheless. Both teams unable to really do anything. Yeah, we weren't really keeping track of the pickups. I have no idea. I think it was fairly even. We can go back and count if we need to, but... With group stages as they are, the nice thing is that it doesn't rely entirely on um, having a definitive winner, unlike uh, brackets like we've used previously. So Correct. Nice group yeah, stage this would, to... If this was a uh, bracket stage game, then we would... First of all, the time, the, the, the time on the map would be you know, 20, 30 minutes, we'd still be playing. Yeah. So in the um, bracket stages, if there's a draw, they go to overtime or similar. Uh, whereas, whereas in the group stages, a draw is allowed. At least I believe that is the case. We are checking with Oscus. So this tournament is being very well run by Oscus and Jaja primarily. Buffett's backing them up. I'm just here to be a pretty face. Okay, looks like we're going to be getting into industrial. All right. Another map that really benefits from that mid control. Same team, so Carrot Brotherhood is on the blue side, Aftershock on the red side. Both teams, again... Fragging fairly evenly on the start here. We see one player trying to break into the base. That was Dar gets taken down. And once again, Carrot Brotherhood with the mid control. Now, I sort of suspect we're going to see a similar game coming up here. Because this is yeah. strategically a very similar map. Bases, quite tricky to get into. This one, a little bit easier to hide in. But again, we've got this kind of large open mid area that's easily controlled by a couple players. And the bases, which, although slightly easier to hide and slightly easier to break into without getting caught, are both, again, fairly easily defended by a couple players. Yeah, I think the bases, it's, 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 it's easier to get to the flag on these bases, but it's probably harder to get out. Yeah. I mean, I think you do, there's some time to uh, kind of hide within this one because you've got a few areas that you can kind of jink and juke into and kind of hide in corners and things, more so in Castle Wars. But I think with the way these teams are playing, they'll know and they will go. They'll follow that compass, find the flag carriers and take them down. So I think we're, again, sort of relying on teams to try and get some sort of flag different, uh, frag difference there, sorry. I'm looking to see if, if either team sends just 
two attackers forward and has those attackers play close in proximity to each other to cr try to create 2v1 matchups like we saw a little bit last week out of the Care Brotherhood on Luxor. Yeah, and I think that's something that we've been sort of lacking in these matches. They've yeah, got right their kind of whole it's... meta strategy, the whole map going, but they're not really fighting together. Yeah, it seems like once the, once they get a good push, it's 1v3 or 1v2, and you just can't get the flags out that way. And I think One, in two, some ways that's somewhat down to... Uh, they have a pickup. They have a ooh. pickup. Care Brotherhood and Nixity is ninjing down the side. He's in. They're pursuing him. Oh, they got him. Yeah, was he wasn't covered almost. at all there. He went down the most open part of the map. And that's again where a bit of coordination from his team, getting another player in there, might have helped him out a bit. I'm trying to use the ground hooks to get across the map quickly. I think to be honest, if he's going down that side, I'd prefer to see him going through the tunnels. Although they are more closed off, they do provide cover from the mid area where the team had control. It means you only kind of have to control the entrance and exit to the tunnels rather than controlling the whole of mid. Red has a person on the roof of blue. Do you think he's going to try and hold this, or is he going to go for the flag? Oh, he's going for the flag. Two players yep. in now, but one of them taken down. Oscus gets in, gets another kill. He's going for the flag. He does have the flag, but blue team should be closing him in now. He spots one, but not in time, and Uxie takes him down. Yeah, they have him trapped in the back. Red has another player here. Yeah, Mr. Koo's coming in. Yeah, the team oh, seems to be trying to be more sneaky this time. Taking advantage of those bases. But they don't have the support structure to get the flags out. Flag. They're all getting pretty Two close. Zero, zero. Like, it's a lot closer to picking up the flag we've seen in this game. But they're not getting it out because they don't have the people with them to help support. We're not seeing the buddy system in use. Looks like Blue posting a defender on top of their base now. Spider Bomb going in. The Ninja, Jiffer Jaffer, getting on top of the base. Snapman inside. But the red flag has been picked up. And they do have two players in the base. Vortex going in, trying to stop them. But they've split up! Milky sure going to one side of the base, Oscus to the other. They just didn't coordinate very well there. They both tried to exit by different routes and both got taken down by different people. There is still a red in the blue base. Red team coming in to try and help him out. And I think we are seeing the team switch up their strategies a little bit, trying to push in a bit more. Red's doing a very good job. Of, they're attacking with two players, and they're not. Dar trying to hide in his in the blue base there. Looks like Snapman's playing the defender role again. He's using uh, his spider kit to really slow things down. Inoxity in the red base, trying to pick off some kills there, but he gets taken down. Mookie Moo has been doing a good time to sneak across this, this map. We're almost halfway through this one. No flag caps. We've gotten a lot closer than we did on Castle Wars. But again, I'd say neither team really has the advantage at the moment. Both teams playing very similar strategies. And putting up very similar frags. Kills. Anoxy and Mr. Koo both leading with 13 kills on opposite teams. And I think those are the guys that we've seen pushing in and getting the kills that let them kind of hide in the base. 
I think Red's coordinating their pushes a little bit better. They're coordinating coming in time. Blue keeps spidering themselves. I've noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, spidering yourself is, has been a tactic people use for kind of creating some cover on the move. I find this to be an interesting strategy. Blue trying to get some control here. All of them taken down there. Mr. Koo really making his wage. I don't think they get paid, but you know, figure of speech. Red really pushing through mid, but that control of the roof paying off for Milky. Oh, sorry, Rafixander, I believe. Rafixander now run sorry, Milky running in. She has the cape. Taken down from behind. And we have one more blue in the base, but do the red team know? Denny, he's going to pick up the flag. The spawns aren't there for red team. He's trying to ninja out, but he is trapped between three players, and there are no blue team there to help him. If he'd waited maybe 10, 15 seconds more, he might have been able to get some help. What do you think the teams need to do to get a flag cap here? We've seen a bunch of different attempts. What do you think's worked best? Flag taken. Oh, we see another flag pick up. And this time they have the help. I'm trying to clear out this last red. The spawns are on the right side though. One taken down. They get inside the base, closed in from the other side though. They are underground. Will the team be able to get there to help? Now in mid. Another player going in and he gets the flag and returns it. The players on blue team not quite able to make it there in time. That was so close to getting out. They got over the halfway point there. And now only five minutes of the match left. That gives me hope though. I think Blue may have cracked the formula here. And now slaughtering Red Team. They've got to watch out for the respawns, but they have three players here defending the flag carrier. Red Team, spawning, takes it down though. A clutch vortex. Kills two players, the flag carrier, and returns it. The third player taken down. That Vortex saved his life, killed the players, and got the flag back. That was close. Although, that's two times that Carrot Brotherhood have made it into the base and picked up the flag and almost gotten out. I think if they continue this performance, they are going to take this. Aftershock may be struggling to respond here. They managed to stop them, but they haven't really shown anything themselves. Another blue in the red base, but his team isn't there to help. Looks like he's going for the flag, but flag maybe... Taken. No, he's gone a bit early. I thought he was going to wait for his team, but... Just taken to pieces. Aftershock pushing out now. But more blue team. Trying to body system in. Taken down again. Only a two-player push there. They do take down a couple of red team, but not enough to get into the flag and kill them. Red team now has a chance of getting into the flag. More blue team out. And Mr. Koo, he's been a top killer today. 2v1. He's taken down almost immediately by Snapman. Really good defending again. We have another red in the base. They're going in one by one. Will he be able to take down the Snapman though? Snapman, not many kills overall. Oh, although, I mean, he's had more this game. But his defending has been on point. Red team now with a stronger push coming in. Four of them getting close to the blue base. Three and a half minutes remaining, but they're getting picked off. They've taken down some of blue team, and it looks like they're trying to get into the flag room now. Their mid control gone down, Oscus gone down, but they... Karen Brotherhood didn't, didn't know he was in here. Now they're turning around, trying to get back onto him. Closing him in. 3v1. He's going to have to take these fights 1v1 if he can manage to. 
Carrier kill. Taken down by uh, Rafik Sander. Sorry, Mining Shark. Nope, Rafik Sander. Nope, Denny. I'll get the names right eventually. If I just say all the names, one of them would be right. Now blue team once again going out. And now we're sort of starting to see the team coordination falling apart. Neither team really pushing in together. The defense from both teams has been spectacular. A couple of times required to be clutch. Mining Shark coming in with those pretty well. But both teams have really shut down the opponent's options for getting these flags out. Once again, Aftershock, trying to push in with one or two players. Carrot Brotherhood mirroring them. We have one player running in here, but the three spawns coming in for Aftershock is going to shut this push down unless we see something crazy. Inoxity gets two kills, three kills. They've got to get the flag and get out before these spawns come in. Denny covering his back. Will we see another crazy play from Mining Shark? Taken down, but Inoxity is on the run. The ninja's coming in. He has defense. He's taken down, but will they be able to return the flag? No. Carol Brotherhood, have the control. Taken down again and returned. Denny with the ninja. Sorry, Dar with the ninja. Jumping onto the flag there. And he somehow survives that too. That was the closest we've seen so far, I think. Cara Brotherhood, so close again. That's three times they've been able to almost get this flag out. Just some crazy chasing by Aftershock there. Their defense maybe has been a bit weaker this time around, but them chasing it down has not been. The ninjas, the paintball spam, the vortex before. Using those kits to the best of their abilities. Really coming in clutch when need to. Now there's only one minute remaining. This is maybe time for one flag cap attempt. The flag run, so the time to one flag and back is about 30 or 40 seconds now. So they have got to get moving. They do not have time to dilly dally. Spawns from both teams coming in. 30 seconds remaining, but Oscar's killed in the blue base. I think this is it. Another draw coming in. This is insanity. This is going to come down to the final map. Are we going to get three draws in a row? Flag taken. We do have a flag pickup, but no time flag to do anything taken. with it. And that is a second draw. Both teams managed to touch the flag there, but more of a desperation play than anything. Neither able to do anything. Now I'm very interested to see which map they choose. This is going to be the decider. If this goes to a draw, that's going to be three draws in a series draw. Luxor, oh my goodness. So Luxor, again, a very similar style of a very similar style of map, mid control. And it comes down to this. Okay, they are now switching teams. Looks like Aftershock wants the blue side. I'm guessing they're going to try the water sneaky. So it's a strategy that we saw Bed, Bath and Beyond employing uh, on the previous week on Luxor was uh, probably inspired by the Shy Marine. 
but it was TNT or X was she's now or he's now called diving into the water, swimming all the way across and sneaking into the base. And that worked pretty well. And I think Aftershock trying to choose the blue team so they can get the slightly better camouflage in the water. And I think this could go either way. Now remember, this is a best of three. Uh, going to Luxor. This is the decider. Whoever wins this takes the series. If they draw, this will be the first series draw I think we've ever had in a tournament. All comes down to this. This time Aftershock in the blue shorts. Carrot Brotherhood in the red shorts. Getting ready to start here. So a question from stream, is there overtime? No, there will not be overtime. This will just be it. Okay, looks like we're going to be starting, going into Luxor. <laughs> Carol Brotherhood versus Aftershock on Luxor. This is for the series. Both teams with only one win so far in the tournament. Whoever takes this gets up with the top team, Bed, Bath & Beyond, to get two wins. Or, neither team could win it and we could end up with our very first draw. Again, okay, we have switched sides, so Aftershock is now the blue team. And Carrot Brotherhood is now the red team. Already, we see Aftershock with a much stronger push coming in here. Already, one in the base for the respawn coming in behind him. 3v1 in the base. Will he be able to turn this into 1v1s and take the fight? Closed in from both sides. Snapman takes him down. Again, we're seeing his great defending skills. Now, this map is slightly different in the bases. Yeah, it's still fairly defensible, but there's a lot more you can do with moving around the base and hiding. And I think this is where we can see finally a flag cup coming in. Both teams, super strong defense, great strat on that side, but not enough to get any further. Both teams trying to get the mid control again. I'm not sure if that's really what they need to do right now. They just need to get pushing. But wiping across the board. Aftershock, some great kills coming in. They are leading the kill board by a lot. Mining Shark and Oscus putting up the numbers. They're in the base. They have four players here. The respawn's coming in. They need to get the kills. They get the kills. There is only one red remaining alive. The flag is out, but they're going to respawn really fast. Snapman unhappy about the respawn box. And now this is going to be our first cap, unless we can get some clutch sniping. Sniping across the map is very possible here. But will we see it? The flag coming in. This is our first flag capture of the series. Now it's all on Carrot Brotherhood. They need to get a flag capture. Will they be able to do what Aftershock did? Or will this come down to this one flag capture? Aftershock with the first lead of this entire series, but will they be able to capitalize on it? Will they be able to keep it and win? Carrot Brotherhood should now be fired up and ready to push. They didn't get the kills. Aftershock got the early kills, managed to win the fights, get in. But Carrot Brotherhood... Previously... Aftershock is doing much better in the open field duels. Yeah, if we look at ju just the kills... The lowest player on uh, Aftershock is only one less than both the highest players on Carrot Brotherhood. Carrot Brotherhood struggling to get the kills. Previously, they were matching Aftershock basically one for one. 
But Four now three, something's two. changed. And this was Kara Brotherhood's map pick. Do you think they're just not kind of in the zone at the moment? Or do you think that something's happened and this map is not working for them? Maybe we'll see just them getting warmed up back into the series. And I hope we do, because this will be quite a shift in tone of this match if Halfshot can keep this up. One thing that's happening is that Blue's pushing out with all five players, and they're just swarming the midfield where Carrot usually has three. And, okay, so now Carrot's pushed out with four. And they've got three kills right in a row, so now they should have a good push to the wall. Yeah, blue being killed almost across the board now. But we've seen blue getting loads of kills, and red is now split up. They're all in 1v1s. So there's only one... Yep. And they get a kill. That's Denny taking down Mr. Koo. They now have full mid control and a player in the base, waiting for the respawns. All of the respawns really close together. Inoxity going down to a 2v1 there. Kara Brotherhood's opting to just wait in middle. I think it took them so long to get mid control, they really want to hold on to it. They weren't willing to risk it all by pushing in. Ninjaing in, Denny with a very risky play there. Ninja's basically right between two blue players. And now we see Aftershock once again with the control of the map, getting the kills, but getting picked off this time. Kara Brotherhood putting up the numbers much better than they were before. Getting the return kills, and now we see Oscus. Maybe blew his cover a bit early there. You can get all the way across the map with that water, but he's trying to use that strategy that we saw from uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. And now we see Milky trying to do the same, but less successful. It is slightly easier to hide as blue in the water. But if you are paying attention, you should be able to see either team. I mean, being in the water, although sneaky, you're basically dead in the water. You can't shoot because the paintballs get slowed down, and you basically can't see where the enemy team is. So unless you are sneaky, you're going to die. Both teams now are playing a couple players in mid, trying to get the kills. Neither really getting a convincing control here. Both teams te seem to be opting for the, we want the entire map control, let's go spread across the whole map. And sometimes that works. But at the moment, when they're fighting kind of 1v1s, it's not very advantageous. If they can switch it, get 2v1s, it goes a lot better. Because you either get one kill and one death, or you just win. Or they get lucky. Or skillful. But getting numerical advantage is a good force multiplier. Red seems to be mostly playing distraction at the moment. Getting one player in, getting them out again, getting them in again, getting them out again. Getting a couple kills here and there. Never really getting full control. There's one hiding in the water. I think they know he's here. Yeah, they know. And he gets taken down fairly swiftly there. All five of Aftershock now, preparing to push. Pushing down that middle lane, which is the entire map. And again, both teams sort of mediocre control. Now, one blue player is in the red base. Looks like it's in Nux team. Yeah, it seems to me that no, red's... That's not in Nux team. Wrong team. They know he's here, though. Flag. He's dropped down. He's got the flag, but immediately taken down. That being With the game being this tight, I could totally see red just trying to camp their base at this point. Red is down one cap, though. 
blue once again picking up the red flag. Yeah, I'm sorry, I meant blue. Yeah. Carrier kill. It's all right. Taken down though. And... Previously, we did see. I think it was Carrot Brotherhood versus Bedvaf and Beyond, maybe, where Bedvaf and Beyond were doing really well while they were pushing, but on the defense they struggled. When they tried to fall back and cover, they started losing or getting killed more. So I wonder if it's playing through Aftershock's head that they need to keep pushing and try and build this lead up rather than sitting on it. Although it does end up with these opportunities where Carrot Brotherhood gets some kills and tries to get in. All of Aftershock respawning though. Do they know that there is a... Yep, they know there's a player. Milky take Yeah, I think that the new respawn system, when these teams are so organized like this, defensively that you have to get multi kills just to get to the flag and then the whole team's on top of you after that uh when when aftershock got their flag they actually got multi kills on top of multi kills and they all pushed in as a group and i think teams... not just, not just sorry yeah they pushed in not just with one person they pushed in with like all four at the same time yeah, and I think teams need to start adjusting to the spawn system. They're still playing, like, just kill everything, run in, kill everything, run out. If they try and time things a bit better, try and stagger the kills, or watch for where the spawns are so they can guarantee being alive, like, I, th I think there's more advantage they can... Who's got an opportunity this. here? They've got four people in the base. Well, they had four people. <laughs> two of them taken down. Now it's down to... Yeah, now it's two, just two left. The commentator's One cursed. Left. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think as much as teams do struggle to beat the spawn system, basically, I think it's possibly because they haven't really put much time into trying to work around it. Right. This is the first tournament with the new spawn system, and, uh, you know, the old strategies of hold midfield, get somebody in, get somebody out, and then provide the cover might not work as well when that person just cannot make multi-kills and get right back out. I mean, we saw on the thing the very first day, X were managing to get basically two multi-kills to get in and out, and that won them the game versus Leftover Pizza on Township. But it's not always going to be that way, and they can't count on that. They need to start figuring out how to take advantage of the system. And now only four minutes remaining. Aftershock still in the lead. This is the deciding map of the series. Two draws previously. Now Aftershock in position to win. Hinoxity trapped. <laughs> Trying to hide behind something. Or ninja out or something gets taken down. There's three minutes left, so you figure there's you have to have probably a good forty seconds probably just to get a flag cap. Red's been doing a great job defending right around the flag, the, the very middle of the map at their entrance. Blue sends people in and they're just getting destroyed by one or two people. I think we saw that last map as well, chasing down flag carriers and things. Both teams, I think, playing very similarly. Similarly. But Aftershock got that one flag cap. They haven't been able to repeat it yet, though, so it may just be that Carrot Brotherhood had a slow start, weren't able to get the kills, and could be losing because of that. Two and a half minutes remaining. Time for two or three more pushes before they are out of time. Now again, both of these teams already have a win on the board, so it's not disastrous if they lose this. have the best strategy in the world, but if you're getting out killed, 
by this kind of ratio, it's just not likely you're gonna, you're gonna win the game. Yeah, good strategies just put you in a position to get the kills. They don't get you the kills themselves. I mean, to be fair, I think neither team is really playing this to the maximum with kind of doubling up in fights and that kind of stuff. I think it's just uh, Aftershock outdueling Cow Brotherhood. But Cow Brotherhood finally getting in, getting the flag almost, but not quite getting out. I think they missed it on the way in there. Taken down by Aftershock, though. Only one minute remaining. Yeah, this is it. Care of Brotherhood's gonna tie this up. They're gonna have to pick up the flag in the next 15 seconds or so. Care of Brotherhood did have the advantage in mid there. Taken down by more kills from Aftershock. They have time for one more push. But they're getting taken down once again. Decimated. They do get the two kills that they need though. Two of them falling back for the defense though. They can't afford to spare those people. And their final two people in mid getting taken down 2v1 each. They do defend, but defending isn't what they need to be doing. They needed to just drop one player back, if that. Yeah, and that's that's been one of the differences the whole game is they're sticking with the strategy of having a, a designated defender, usually in the base. And they've just been they've just been outnumbered in the midfield most of the game. Yeah. And, and teams... not making the the other, the other difference is, is Aftershock's made a lot of clutch kills when they've needed it. We, we saw a few minutes ago, Care Brotherhood had four people basically breaking in the base at the one time, and in, 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 in the 1v1 duels, Aftershock won every one of them. And yeah, that was Aftershock winning the match. Neither team willing to let their flag go, neither willing to leave the defense. And that is Aftershock taking the win over Carrot Brotherhood. Carrot Brotherhood yep. taking a loss there. I think that is their first loss of the tournament. We'll be updating the tournament bracket in a moment. But I think that really sets the tone. Both teams. Right, let's update this bracket real quick. Just going to report the scores for this. So, Arshok take one. Camera hood zero. Zero, 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 one, zero. There we go. So hopefully that will update the bracket. Let's find out. <laughs> nope, bracket is not updated properly. That's fun. I probably broke it. Lol. Anyway, that puts uh, Aftershock with two wins, one loss. Carrot Brotherhood with one win, one loss. Uh, we will be switching over streamers in a moment, because I will be playing. But that was that was crazy. I think that's something that we probably will see more of this tournament, where neither team is able to really get a major advantage, yeah. unless they can start strategizing appropriately. Hello. Oscar, yes. congratulations. Thank you, thank you. That was close. Yeah, it was one really flag close. cap in three games. Yeah.
Now it's your turn. <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, and uh, have All you right. stopped live stream? Not yet. No. So, okay. so we let me be... know when you have, and I'll just start. Yeah. We will be taking a quick break while we switch live streamers. Uh, we will see you all shortly. Don't go anywhere. 